Welcome guys to yet another episode of Doings Corner. Like some of you already know, my name is Doing David and I am the host of this podcast. On today's episode, hmm, we have a very interesting guest. Most of you would know her, but I know her as Tammy Owasa. Thank you so much for coming today, Tammy. Thank you so much. You look really nice. I like what you're wearing. I like the accessories, you know, everything is given. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming. So today we're going to be discussing the theory of homosexuality, right? Um, there's a common, I don't know, I don't know if I'm to call it a misconception or just general thoughts that people have that homosexuality is learned or is a choice that people, you know, just choose to be gay and it's not like they're born that way. So first of all, before we dive properly into the topic, I want to ask, do how do you identify sexually um i'm a lesbian that means i am not sexually attracted to men at all i've never felt sexual attraction to men in my life at all it feels like. <laughs> oh. so yeah so there was no point maybe when you were younger that you liked men and then it changed uh, over time so yeah there's this thing where most people i know that are gay go through a phase of trying to you know adapt when people tell you that's how. Because I grew up in Ilori. Ilori is a place where I did not have any homosexual advice. There was literally nobody on my TV screen that mm. was gay. So it, it was, I was setting over because it's not like anybody was telling me what to do it. Or, so yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I think my first question is what I already asked before. Do you think that homosexuality is a choice? Of course not. Uh, well, I think that at certain points in your life, you decide to choose um, if you're going to deal with the persecution that comes with it okay. or just adapt and do what other gay people did before you where they were either quiet about it mm-hmm. or they got married to a man and relieved in miserable lives. Sorry. <laughs> So yeah, I don't I do not believe that being gay is a choice. However, I think that deciding to engage in um sexual behavior that mm-hmm. is gay is a choice. A choice that I will make every day of my life. <laughs> okay, so what I'm getting from what you just said is you think people can choose to engage in that sexual Oh yeah, because it's very and I don't mean it in like, oh, you're choosing because that is that is um, sexual deviance that you want. Mm-hmm. I actually mean that I know gay people that are married with children. And they're married to like the opposite gender. Yes, because it's very mm-hmm. possible. You know that um, sexuality is not sexual orientation. Mm-hmm. Your sexual behavior is not sexual orientation. Right. Sexual behavior is choosing to act on it. Mm-hmm. And that is what um, religious bodies preach where they're like, you can be gay, God hates the sin. It's sin. Well, God alone hates the sin. <laughs> so that is sexual behavior when you engage in homosexual behavior. Right. But being gay in itself is inherent. It's something that you are. You right. don't change it. I've gone for more than run sessions than I can count mm. before I was 18. So I know that it's not possible to change it. You can suppress it. You can suppress your sexuality and lie to yourself. You can make yourself just adapt because Everybody had a face where they did that before coming right. out of the closet. It's getting a boyfriend just so people can stop asking you questions, things like that. You can always do that. Well, if you are gay, you are gay. <laughs> right. Speaking about coming out of the closet, for you, at what age did you realize that uh, I like women? I don't think I like men very much. So I didn't put um, names to it before I was probably. 19 or so that's when i finally came to terms with it i'm 26 now Mm. but i always knew that i liked girls and it's not like you wake up and you know that's just what you are yeah literally just it's i was writing love letters to girls instead of boys (laughs) and i didn't know so i got in a lot of trouble (laughs) because again i mentioned that in is like a place where you get homosexual nature right so so it's i didn't know i'm supposed to have it so i got in a lot of trouble Okay, so how did your family members react to this? Like, did you? I'm, I'm assuming you came out to them because I know that you know a lot of people, especially in this part of the world, like, is it that they can't come out to their family members because of 
they don't know how they're going to react to it or, you know, whatever consequences will come with coming out to them. For you, how was your experience coming out? Um, it wasn't very good at first. But I'm a very stubborn person. I, I don't mind if you want to be I think we can tell. <laughs> as long as I'm happy right. and I'm doing my thing. So it took me years to come out, but my mother always knew because again, I was writing little bit <laughs> I was writing little bit to girls and I got in a lot of trouble. So we started to run sessions. So it was the time I actually wanted to be TV bad before I, oh. I took myself to MFM, but then to TV bad. I saw so that thing was not coming out. <laughs> so yeah. at some point you just had to like, you know I what, I'm going to have to live with this. Yeah, this is who I, I told am. Them, I told my mother, I think I called her. Um, that was a few years ago, like three years ago. Um, I called her and told her, I have something to tell you. You already know what you deny, but I have to tell you because I'm tired. And this was around a period where I was working with somebody and he told me that, um, there are rumors about my sexuality, so I should get a boyfriend. I'm not playing this game again. <laughs> oh, wow. Like the person wanted you to get a boyfriend yeah, because a boyfriend of your career? Of, because... For my career. Because I mean, career suicide. What I did is basically career suicide. I'm very aware of it. Because... Oh, really? Yeah. So coming out to say you are gay, you think that kills your career? Oh, in yes, it definitely it. does. Really? Yes, it does. It does. And in the mainstream sense, now you always have people that um, roll with you. Mm. But in the mainstream sense, nobody wants to... Um, Associates. Associates. And this is something I am very aware of the consequences of my actions. I mm. took it deliberately. It's like when I think about it, I went through so much trauma in my life. I went through so many painful periods. And I'm certain that hiding my sexuality added to that. And my mother saw everything I went through firsthand with my mental health. Mm. So at that point, it was like, are you going to accept this thing or do you really want your child to die? <laughs> because it was it was getting right, to that point right. and that's the reality for most gay people it's not something that you wake up and accept especially in its, um, um, an environment like this when people don't accept it it takes a process where you're like okay this is what I'll lose this is what I'll gain this is what's gonna happen to me so I told to my mother and it didn't go well at first but she had to come to terms with it because she loves me mm -hmm. right I'm, I'm happy that you have um your mother's support because I can imagine how tough it is for people that don't have like family support mm -hmm. or friends. Mm -hmm. I can imagine like the isolation and yeah. loneliness that they must feel. Do you feel like you had to pick between your career and yours and your sexuality, like being who you are or choosing to thrive in your career? Do you feel like you had to pick one? So, um, I have a, a school of thought that I don't think people agree with yet. But I do not like capitalism for shit. Can you? I you you can swear you can swear for people that are not like we understand English more than each other. For people that don't understand so what capitalism, capitalism is, is yeah. a system where we literally just wake up and work and do everything and try to adjust ourselves. This is how you dress if you're a singer. Mm. This is how you dress if you are a salesperson. Right. You know that entire system of work and do stuff and live your life for work. Mm -hmm. I don't believe in that. So I do not necessarily believe in having a career. That's why I always tell people that listen to my music, but I'm doing this thing for fun. The day stops being interesting. I'm not doing it anymore. Oh. So yeah, that's how it is for me. It was easy to make that choice because I was already done with the system. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so it was you that decided that you didn't want to be like signed to i'm assuming oh, we're no, talking no. about we, like this i feel like being signed also led to my awakening in a sense it's now no shade to anybody if i throw shade i'll make it very clear um <laughs> <laughs> you have balls <laughs> yeah um being signed um led to an awakening in the sense that i realized that because of the default state of Nigerians, because mm -hmm. of our default programming, because of the way we think and the way we are raised and the things we're taught to do, because of that, it's kind of hard for me, regardless, as somebody that is seen as a woman, presenting mm -hmm. as a woman, right. for people to take you seriously, it's in the statistics, literally you should look back and you compare most male artists to female artists. artists. You have to put in a lot of work. And my former record label boss said the same thing. He was like, it's harder to push a female artist. That's why I don't hold certain things against him. Mm. Because it is, and it's not his fault. It is the industry, it's the system. We all contribute to the system. 
but at the end of this is the system is bigger than us right. so when i thought about it it was literally a win-win situation for me it's like you don't like me anymore i don't like you too <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness i don't think i don't well are you sure that it was that he didn't like you or he just didn't oh, not him not yeah him. i'm talking about the system okay the not system not him, him. Not okay him. okay me. things just speed out the way they did because that's right it. right okay so there's a lot of talk about you know oh homosexuality is a sin right if you're gay you're going to hell you can't make everyone you know god will condemn you you yeah. know all that talk right yeah. what's your opinion on this to be bothered about that you first have to believe in hell you I don't mean, i don't do you believe in heaven i don't Oh, you think, believe in I heaven believe or... that heaven and hell are states of mind, they're states of consciousness. And I believe that um, a God has caring as presented in the Bible. Mm. It's not going to do that. And the word homosexuality was not introduced um, into the Bible until the year, is it 1969 or 1949? I'm not sure. But it was one of those years that it was introduced. This is a word that these people did not even know it existed. They were not trying to persecute people for this. And all of a sudden, when they started, started revising the Bible, they started adding things to it. Mm -hmm. So for me, I do not think I'm going to hell. I joke about it often because it gets on people's nerves and I love to do that. <laughs> <laughs> but I do not think I'm going to hell. I do not believe in hell. I do not think that the pit of eternal damnation that I'm going to. Mm. And to be honest, if there's a pit of eternal damnation that I'm going to, I'd rather go there than be stuck with Christians in heaven. Because Christians are the meanest people I have met in my in my life. Mm. They come into my DMs every day to tell me I'm going to hell. That is not what Jesus was preaching. Jesus right. said, Look your neighbor was at yourself. Jesus said, Let him who is without sin be the first to cast a stone. If you leave all that and now start persecuting people where you're probably doing worse in your closet. Mm. I really, I don't. I, don't do I, think, I think in this part of the world, we practice this thing where, you know what, if you are seeing a different sin from my sin, mm -hmm. your sin is greater than my sin. Mm -hmm. We're all sinning, but like, no, let's focus on your sin, Honestly, not my sin. And again, I also do not believe in the concept of sin. <laughs> I think things can be wrong and things, not even wrong or right. I think things can be serving and not serving. I think that people who are actually the biggest criminals and sinners in the world right now are the ones leading it. If you look at the world and if you actually sit down to research the world and its histories and all the systems, the social political systems, you'd realize that the people that are in charge of things are the ones that are the biggest sinners. It's right. how they say there's no ethical billionaire because if you make billions by becoming like a, a cosmetic one and there's a sweatshop somewhere where children that are underage that work in there mm -hmm. so as far as i'm concerned first of all being gay is not a sin it might be according to the bible and i won't say i respect that or disrespect that it is what you believe in those are your values you should believe that this is what it is but for me i have been set free from that mindset right so i've come across a few of your videos and i think the part that I get clearly now is it is not that you don't think that God exists. You believe that there's a God, yes, there is a right? God. You just don't believe that he's being portrayed in the way that he actually is. And I don't believe it's a he. I believe that God oh. is in everything. I believe that God is energy. I believe that God is life source. Apart from being, I'm not religious, but I'm very spiritual. Mm -hmm. And there's so many religions in the world, each one saying that this is the one true God. Mm -hmm. And if you were, if you happen to be born in that religion, that's probably what that's you what you practice. Yeah. And for me, I do not think those religions are wrong. In fact, I believe that Jesus did exist. I did. Yes, he existed. I believe that he, Jesus existed. Okay, he did on, exist. Okay. He existed. And I think that Jesus lived the life that he said he lived. Mm -hmm. I think he lived a beautiful life because Jesus was an outcast. If you look at it, he had issues with the church. If you go back, Jesus had issues with the fact that Pharisees were judgmental. And the Christian, Christians are still doing the same thing he had issues with till date. And he never calls people Christians. Christians were first called Christians in Athens after Jesus died. Mm. So for me, it's, I believe these people existed. I believe that what they were preaching, very sensible, love your neighbors. For real, love people. It's mm. as simple as that. Right. All this additional need to police people's lives is not rooted in law. And we all complain that the world is messed up. But we're contributing actively to it, including myself. Mm. because at the end of the day if you go to buddhism islam at the end of the day 
the core of this is to care about others. Right. Love one another. Yeah. Right. Very true. I actually agree with you on that. I feel like there is no greater commandment that God that, gave to yes. us than love one yes. another. And I, I genuinely believe that people are a bit too judgmental these days. And, you know, it's almost like, oh, this person doesn't believe in what I believe in. You know, let's so cast this person out. out. Exactly. Right. And this person is a sinner. This person is going to hell. Mm-hmm. I don't agree with that too. So I'm going to go to my next question. I just want you to like share a bit of the fears that gay people in Nigeria experience. Like what are the things that you people actually pass through okay. in Nigeria? Um, the fear of being outed, because I know that before I was actually outed by blogs. <laughs> I didn't come oh, out. you didn't come out yourself. Yeah. And when that happened, I was like, fuck it. Yes. <laughs> but the fear of being outed is real because when you're outed, you lose work, you lose money, you lose sleep, you lose, you lose peace of mind, you lose friends. You lose family. Sometimes you even lose security and privacy because you can be outed online. Like there's so many blogs responsible for doing that at the moment where they just out gay people that are going about minding their business. I mean, it's very, it's pretty common in Nigeria. Wow. And this thing have real repercussions because there are people that are in the closet because they have to be in the closet. It's I, I have a song where I was um, like, it's man has to chop. But mm. if man does not have work, man cannot chop. Right. And at some times it's either picking between being out of the closet and living your life mm-hmm. and not having to hide or being in the closet and being miserable. Not that and not necessarily that everybody in the closet is miserable, but there's always that sense of I'm not being true with the people that are around me. Like for me, it was before I go for an interview, I'd sit down in front of a mirror and rehearse what to do in case somebody asks me about my sexuality. When I'd have been, I'd been bothered about making music, right. <laughs> when I could have been bothered about singing and, you know, putting out my best, I was more concerned about hiding because it was in my head. It's, if you didn't find out, I lose this opportunity. I can't make it in life. Mm. And of course, that's not true, but that was what I believed then. So the that people have that fear. It's a fear of losing everything you have. That's what comes with being gay. You can literally, if people find out you're gay today, you can lose your family, you can lose your friends. You can lose everything. And then the psychological damage of actually having to hide in a country where you're not hurting anybody, but you're criminalized. And actual criminals are working scot-free without any constitution coming after them. That was be tough. I feel so- <laughs> it is. I'm it is. so sorry. I'm so sorry that you have to like go through this because I can imagine. I can imagine how difficult it is because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, what we all want is a right to just be able to live exactly. and just be. Yeah. Exactly. And it must be very difficult to not just be able to mm-hmm. live. And then when you come out, you become the face of something like you might just want to live your life. But the moment you start saying you're gay, you're automatically, oh, that's gay person. Right. Whereas yesterday I was just your friend, or yesterday I was just your sister. Mm. But now that you know that I'm gay, it's automatically I to be gay. And even <laughs> even the spiritual thing that people talk about, they say, "Oh, you go to hell." Da, da 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 da. But then, if people are born this way, if people are just like naturally from their mother's womb, mm. like born this way, how then can God punish somebody for exactly. something that they have no exactly. control over? Exactly. Mm. Do you have any I, any advice for anybody that is gay currently and is still like in the closet? Maybe they're scared to come out. They don't know how people react to it. Do you have anything to say to them? Um, do what's best for you. You don't have to come out. You don't owe anybody coming out. But them not coming out, is that not them suffering in... Yeah, so there, there's... there's. I feel like there are layers to it, to it. It's not. And it says that sometimes coming out is not safe. I came out at a certain level of financial privilege. I came out at a certain point where income out was still, I was okay. I right. knew that bad as bad, I'll be fine. Right. But there are people, and this is a country where, I don't know if it has changed, but where the world's poverty caps up. This is a country where the people that are genuinely suffering, actually suffering, are not represented because everything is classed. Mm. So if you are living in the slums somewhere and you're thinking of coming out, you have to think of your safety too. Right. Because you're living in a place where they bring out cameras and beat you up and post videos online because it happens every day. I've seen at least 10 videos on TikTok in the last year where queer people not even identifying as queer in public, just probably 
the sense that you're queer, maybe it's a feminine presenting man or masculine presenting woman, or somebody that seems trans. These people are just minding their business. And because people think they're queer, they start beating them up. It's very common here. So in that kind of situation, I think it's okay to do what's best for your safety. It's okay to plan it. It's not, it's, um, I'm not going to, I think it's, it's unrealistic in this environment to just be like, come out, fuck it. <laughs> I think it's very irresponsible to do that because it has real repercussions. It's right. nice to say online, I go online and be like, yeah, if you're gay, come out, go do fuck all the people around you. Those people can kill you. It's mm. as bad as that they're gay people that die because they're gay. So I think that it's okay if you want to take your time before coming out. And I think it's also okay if you decide that, fuck it, I don't mind the consequences. At the end of the day, think of what's best for you. Mm. But, you know, there's something that came to my mind, right? As much as you say that it's not a choice and people are born that way, I don't think that we can particularly blame people that think that it's learned. I'll tell you why. Because there's so many people that maybe they, you know, they get their hearts broken by the opposite gender, right? And they're like, you know what? Let me try be with a woman. Let me try. You know, the people that actually do. I believe that there are people that actually do that. So do you think that there's some people that learn this thing? Or there's some people that, there's some people that even just think that, oh, this is cool. Like, oh, you know, everybody's doing this. You know, let me do this. Right? So do you believe that? Can you really blame people that say that it's learned? Because the people that do it because everybody's doing it. There are people that do it because they're heartbroken. Mm -hmm. The people that are doing it because whatever reason, right? Those are the only two reasons I can think of. So can you really blame people when they say it is learned? And is there a part of you that kind of feels like you can learn it a little bit? Wow. Um, again, I said there's a difference between sexuality and sexual behavior. But right. sexual okay. orientation and sexual behavior. So if you're learning being gay because you think it's cool, I think that sexual behavior, it's how people, it's why when men talk to me, most of the time they come to me talking about sex because they think automatically being a lesbian is about sex because the last time they encountered a lesbian was in a porn website on a porn category. So all their mind is, they don't even think of the fact that you could be a lesbian and not be having sex. You're just a lesbian because that is what you're attracted to. You don't think of all that. That's so. It's for me. It's if you can learn to be gay, or you want to choose to do this because this is what other people are doing. That could be your sexual behavior, and that could be yeah. And it could also be your orientation, mm. because sometimes people have different reasons for doing things. It's people. There are people that get their gay awakening when they're in their fifties after they had all their children, mm. and they're not. Is that possible? Gay. It's very possible. So Very all your life, you didn't know you were gay until... This, this, <laughs> How? Um, if you're in a place where the programming is heavy and you never question the programming, all you do is go out with men because that's what he said you do. And it's understanding that you're gay doesn't necessarily come to some people like, oh, I'm gay, I wake up and I know that I'm gay because there are people that have to go through years of deprogramming and actually on learning certain things. You know, there's so many um, things that the world normalizes that actually affects gay people. Like when people say, oh, not all women enjoy sex with men. So there could be a girl there that is gay and she would not enjoy sex with men and she would be like, not all women enjoy right. sex Right, so she's not men. thinking that it's because she's, she's gay. She's thinking exactly. maybe exactly. I'm just one of those women mm -hmm. that don't enjoy so sex with men. So breaking out of the right. is something that was not easy. I happen to be somebody that I've almost always been very conscious of myself and my environment and things inside of me, mostly inside of me. There's a very colorful world inside of me that I don't mind retreating to. And that's why it made it easy for me to realize on time that, okay, this is what it is. But I people that don't even have the word for it. They just know that that their best friend, they really, really like, this is somebody I really like. And then they go all their lives being best friend. And you just realize that you're more attached to your best friend than your husband. Or right. It happens. Okay, so I want to talk about this pandemic, quote unquote, that is out there, right? Where you see a lot of people that go ahead to get married, but they know within themselves that they are really into like the same sex, but they go ahead and marry the opposite gender just because of, I don't know, whatever reason. Yeah. Why do you think, and most of them are men, I guess. Why do you think men do that? I think there are actually a lot of women that do that too. Oh, the really? reason it's a big deal when men do it is because when women kiss each other, it's still normal. Mm -hmm. Like it's two straight men kiss each other 
oh, that is how women express their emotions. Women are very emotional. Women are very, it's when people see men doing it, they're like, okay, that's, that's a big deal. So I think that um, if I'm talking about it from a realistic point of view, that will continue to happen as long as the world continues to hold gay people as criminals. And as long as men do not unlearn toxic masculinity, because it plays into that. It's like, there's a dynamic to everything. When it's a woman involved, there's a dynamic to it. When it's a man involved, there's a dynamic to it. Now, when it's a woman involved in a society that is highly patriarchal, you know that she's going into her husband's house. She'll do as her husband says. Mm. Even if she doesn't want to have sex sometimes, like, oh, that is what he wants. Now, that is somebody that's subjecting herself. It's different. When a lesbian goes into a relationship with a man, it's almost like subjecting yourself to sexual abuse every day. Because you know in your body that you don't want it. You know in your spirit and your mind that you don't want it. But you close your eyes and do it. Mm. Now, usually men benefit more from marriage in a patriarchal society. Let's be honest. Because statistically, men that are married actually live longer than men that are not married. So oh, really? men benefit. Yeah, they benefit more from marriage. Because who is in the cooking? Who is in the cleaning? You have to go to work. She has to go to work too. But she'll come back and do the cleaning, do the cooking, do the emotional waste lifting, do the spiritual waste lifting. So when men do that, I understand why there's a lot of backlash because you are the one deciding to put yourself in that situation. But again, that's the situation that realistically will not stop as long as we're in a society that encourages men to be hypermasculine, that encourages men not to share their feelings, that encourages men to believe that you have to be a certain way to be addressed as a man, as seen as a man. Definitely, if you want to reap the benefits of this society, the way the society is structured, if I want to reap the benefits in quotes today, all I have to do is start covering up and start wearing, copy covering my face and covering my tattoos and be like, I've given my life to Christ. Forgive me for all the things I've done. Everybody starts running back. We're so predictable and it's so inauthentic. It actually makes me sick because anybody can get anything they want based on what people believe. You're very easily, I feel like people think that they're giving original opinions most of the time, but there's nothing original about thinking the same way your mother thought last when she was alive or your, what your grandmother thought when she was alive. There's absolutely nothing original about that. So it's not an original thought when you're thinking those things. Mm. So yeah, I think it's inevitable that gay people will marry straight people because of the system. Now, there are those of us that cannot stand the system and are very tired. Mm -hmm. I would rather die. <laughs> but there are people that still want to live their life and not be disturbed. Right. And you can't really blame them. No, but you know what? I take that back. I can't say you can't really blame them because it's a very heartbreaking thing to do to someone. Even if I understand True. what you mean by, True. you know, the society, you yeah. know, expects a man to be a certain type of way and they can't come out because that could actually, that could actually affect them in real life, like their job mm -hmm. and everything. But it's very heartbreaking to do that to somebody else. Like it to is. say to somebody at the altar, in front of their family, in front of God, in front of, I'm marrying you, I'll spend the rest. And you know, in your heart of hearts, that your yeah. soulmate is really yeah, a, man. a man. Like, Right. <laughs> that's that's Actually, a very right. wicked thing to yeah, do to anybody. Right. Um, I think that I believe in nuance and complexity. I believe that two things can be true at once. Mm -hmm. When I think about it from the woman's side, considering all the bullshit women have to put uh, put up with in this society, I think it's absolutely unfair to put a woman through that situation where she's going to get she's thinking she's got getting married, where I can finally settle down and start my life, mm -hmm. and then the person she's married to is a closeted gay man. But it's also, as I said, unrealistic. So I think two things can be true at once. It's very, it's extremely unfair to do that to women, but it's also inevitable because as I said, there are people that don't even know till they are in their fifties or forties. I don't know if it, I don't, it's, I'm trying to understand how possible that is. You live 50 years in this world and you people, don't know that you're gay. Are, so the thing is, I don't think they don't know. I think using the word no, okay. Yeah. Using the word no is. I think or maybe they've not it's accepted suppressed. it. It's suppressed. Okay. You know that thing? I feel like even churches encourage this thing. Churches encourage it. Because when you're telling a gay person that give your life to Christ, God does not hate the sin. I hate the sin. Mm. You're telling that person to go against their nature mm. and start trying to adapt. Trying to adapt is never going to be like the original. Mm. You are just trying to be like them. So it's... It's inevitable if the society is continuing telling you that, hey, even if you're gay, you don't have to act on it. That's the person not acting on it, unfortunately. But involving another person in their not acting, person, that's yes. wicked. You can decide not to act on it and it decide is. that I'm never getting it married is. my entire it life. Is. 
Yeah, that's very wicked. And also, there are people that actually say that, oh, you know, I was liking, like, I, there was something I saw I saw on Instagram one day. Mm -hmm. One guy was, like, giving a testimony where he was like, oh, uh, I've always liked men all my life, but then I came to this church and he prayed for me and, yeah. you know, I no longer have those feelings. So are you saying that those people are lying? Are you saying that no amount of deliverance or prayer can take away that gay spirit? Is, yeah. Are they lying? I can't speak for them. Where I can speak for myself. I was born in a church. I was raised in a church by a pastor. I grew up in the hands of a pastor who did deliverance for me a couple of times. I went to churches for deliverance. I went to deliver to five. <laughs> and it did not go. But I, I had certain periods in my life where I was willing to suppress it. Mm. The only thing for me is I, I feel like there are people that can suppress it and close their eyes as it be opposed. I can't. For me, it's my, I can't, the I body can't won't let you imagine doing it. But there are people that have the ability to suppress things that much that they need that life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So I also wanted to ask about this. You know, we have a lot of effeminate men these days, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of people have this mindset that if a man doesn't act, you know, very masculine and very, mm -hmm. <clears throat> he's gay. Mm -hmm. Is it always true that a man that acts a bit more feminine than masculine is always gay or are they effeminate men that are not gay at all they just don't believe that your um the way you present yourself to the world has anything to do with your sexuality i think they're so they're completely different by the time i feel like society will advance to the point where we start unpacking these things i mean they have absolutely nothing to do with each other because i know extremely masculine men that are gay it has absolutely nothing to do it's society that's boxed things into if you're feminine you're this if you're masculine you're this but mm -hmm. in reality, that's not the case. So it's possible to be feminine and straight, to be a feminine man and straight. It's possible to be feminine and gay. It's possible to be a masculine man and very gay. Mm -hmm. And it's possible to be a masculine man and not gay. I actually really agree with you. My former house where I lived, I had a neighbor that lived downstairs, my house. And he didn't live in the compound, but he was housing his boyfriend in the compound. So he was married. He had two kids. I'm not... I've had conversations with him, like, does your wife know about this? And it's like, he can't tell his wife about it. But every time he's sleeping with his wife, he's thinking about this boy. Every time. But in my head, I'm just like, I kind of understand, you know, where he's coming from. I said, I don't want to lose my... I don't think that it is that he doesn't love that woman or he doesn't... He doesn't want to lose, lose his family, his kids and all that. But you are literally, like, keeping a grown person... At, at, at what point... Is your wife going to know that? You know, I just think it's a bit wicked. It is. I think it, it is, is wicked, to be honest. As much as I want to make excuses for them because yeah. of where we live and the society and mm -hmm. everything, I think it's, it's like very I wicked. said, two things are true. It's not fair to do that to anybody. But I also understand where they're coming. Right, right. Okay, so I think my final question with this is, do you have anything to say to people that are so anti-gay? Like, you know what? You're the people like that, like... If they see a gay person, they're like, you know, I can't stand this person. I can't. Do you have anything to say to them? Honestly, I think that if you're bothered by um by another person living their life and minding their business, you have issues. You have things to deal with. And it's not about business. It's really none of the community business I feel about. I always say this thing. How I do not force people to believe in the validity of my existence. It's not possible. The world will continue to have people that think that gay people will die. Mm. And the world will continue to have gay people like me that are tired of people's bullshit. The world will continue to be, it's, it might get better, but there are certain things that some people will not unlearn because unlearning is a very deliberate process. It's a process of sitting yourself down to self, to reflect. And the ability to introspect and reflect is not something a lot of people have. Mm. Because if you had the ability to actually process things and break things down and ask yourself, why do I have issues with this? There's so many, for me, usually the reason it points to is always back to the person that has issues with it. Because regardless of what the person is doing, as long as they're not hurting anybody, if you're so moved and concerned about it that you hit them with the only passion, mm. <laughs> there's something wrong with you. Well, can you really blame them? Because I, for me, a part of me kind of feels like it's just the way 
the world, this part of the world yeah. is set up. Yeah. Is also at the end of the day, the things that we know, the things that we believe in, mm-hmm. I believe they're things that we learned growing up. Yeah. I think there's a lot that maybe the way our family is, or yeah. so if somebody came from a religious home where you know they've taught the person all their lives that you know gay people should be condemned, yeah. Sodom and yeah. Gomorrah was destroyed because yeah. God frowned upon it. Yeah. You can't really blame them for them. You can't really blame them for thinking, oh, you know what, let's destroy gay people too because if they believe so much in jesus christ yeah. and they believe that jesus christ or god in this mm-hmm. sense killed the whole or destroyed the whole because city or coming because people. of that so you expect that you know they're fighting for the lord's yeah work. that's why i said it's programming at right. the end of the day um i would not blame you from your for your programming but at a certain point if your programming is affecting my um life our and existence my life being, and my existence i don't care because you don't care about me. So mm-hmm. I don't have to care about you. So I say, I always say that you can believe that they don't exist. You can hate them. And if you, if I'm walking or minding my business and you try to attack me, I'm, I'm always ready to fight back. And I will always bring the nuclear weapon to a fist fight. <sighs> because if I am existing like this in the society, I know the repercussions of my existence. I know what I'm passing through and I know the things I have to deal with. And I understand where you're coming from. Understanding does not mean I have to fuck with it. Understanding it does not mean I have to support it. The fact that I am capable of unpacking things and realizing that, okay, that's your program. You genuinely believe it's not like you're actually trying to be gay. You believe in your heart of hearts that gay people are terrible and that is why the world's get it. That is even a problem for you because if you continue to hold yourself to that fear of, oh, this is the world is coming to an end, I'm going to go to hell. A lot of people actually, um, they don't allow themselves to live the, the lives that could have been colorful and beautiful because of the things that you hold on your, on your heart. Oh, I don't want, I don't want these people around me because people are bad. It's a, everybody has bad, everybody has bad. Right. So if you are not doing the work of unpacking, which I realize now, if I'm being honest with myself, so never do because again, it's work. And not everybody is willing to go and packing things for you because you're gay. Then it's easy to be gay. actually, yeah. So I understand where they're coming from, but I don't have to fuck with it, and I will not, and I will not even tolerate it. I try to, my, I try my best to avoid people like that in my reality. Once I notice that a person is homophobic, you can never have access to me. Mm. Okay, so do you see yourself getting married to a woman? What? If you get married to a woman, or yeah. when you get, should I say when? Because you're sure. Yeah. When you get married to a woman, I'm sure there are ways these days to have children, and the sperm donors and all that. Don't you think that that child that is going to be born into that type of family yeah. is learning that has become the person's, that child's normal? Yeah. So can't you say that that type of child can learn to be gay? It's very impossible. So the thing is, I feel like we talk a lot of theory most of the time, but we don't react, interact with actual people. There are real people, real gay couples that have children that are very straight. I've seen videos, a couple of videos online with families that are gay, where their child, girls come to tell their mother, two others that I have a crush on this boy. Mm-hmm. The thing with gay, uh, being gay is I think that people see it in terms of theory before they actually see that this is just people living their lives right. and being gay is absolutely not contagious not in way if you give it to the child yourself because if it was if it was by learning i should have learned to be straight by now i know what i would have been yeah, <laughs> so right. I, it's not you can never learn a sexuality now you can learn to be open to the idea of oh these are gay people they're just gay people my mother's are gay that's it mm. and that's what it is and you can also be gay and happen to be born by gay people. Now, if a child is gay and the parents are gay, that is just what the child happens to be. Mm. Because my parents are straight and I'm gay. So it's not, it's not being gay is not, again, I will always, being gay can never be learned. It can never be taught. What about being bisexual? Can that be taught? Sexual orientation and sexual behavior. Let's sexual behavior can be taught. It's like when straight women agree to a threesome, with another woman because their husband likes it. That's sexual behavior. She's not attracted to that woman. But her husband likes it, let me try it. Right. That is sexual behavior. Being being bisexual is not sexual behavior. Being bisexual is a sexual orientation on its own. Mm-hmm. If I happen to be, it's a spectrum. I happen to be on the other end of the spectrum that does not want me. 
there are people in between that want right. that just want to live their life and do whatever they want to do. And there are people on the other end that happen to be so straight that I cannot sh- shake them. I have to be on the end that is very gay that I cannot shake them. It's very it's <laughs> right, right. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. I feel like we've really like spoken about this whole topic, but I just want to give like my own two cents to people that are gay, right? I cannot really speak to you people because I it's not like a personal experience that I have. So I can't say that I understand what you're going through, especially in this part of the world. But I would say, just like she said, make sure that, you know, all this, everything surrounding your particular circumstance is working in your favor before you decide to come out to say, you know, I am gay. And make sure that you truly believe that you are gay and it is not something that you think oh my friends are doing it and it's cool or you know my heart has been broken by this person i don't think that a bad heartbreak would automatically turn you into a gay person i don't think so so sometimes i feel like we try to talk ourselves into feeling these things like oh if a man breaks up with me and maybe i've been with this man for like 10 Mm -hmm. years and i'm like i don't want to be with men again i want to be with women the people that say that have no experience women women are very difficult to date I can imagine women, because women, we have a lot of emotions yes, and yes. I can imagine emotional so women, and emotional. It was so just going to be. Even, it's not the paradise you think it is. It is as much work as being in a straight relationship. Right. All that work you have to put in, all that emotional work you have, you have to put in. Well, let me thank you too when you're with a woman because now you have to learn to be the one to keep quiet when you're having an argument. You have to mm. learn to be the one to. It's it's not something that is you just find a woman. Once a man breaks your heart, you're happy. You break your heart. Right. There's plenty of break in that community. I, I I personally think <laughs> if it was a choice, so many people would have chosen to be yes. gay. Because on what the kind shege that men have shown me in this world, I if it was a choice, I, I would have I chosen. I always say I can't relate to what it's like to be straight, but sometimes I feel bad for a straight woman because I men, oh we see we men, see a lot men. we see a lot. <laughs> trust me, we see a lot. Okay, so Tammy, you know we are in Nigeria, of course, and there is a fourteen-year jail term mm-hmm. for people that are gay right so first of all what do you think about that policy number one so it's not necessarily criminalizing your existence as a gay person it's criminalizing gay gatherings and gay marriages that's the ssmp same-sex uh, marriage act the mm-hmm. marriage prohibition act yeah and a country that so i always say this if you want a homophobic president you're going to get a misogynistic president alongside homophobic because misogyny and homophobia work hand in hand, it is very impossible to meet a homophobic person that does not inherently think women are beneath them, even if they say they are not. You mm-hmm. see it in the way they act, you see it in the things they say and the things that they believe inherently. Mm-hmm. And it is impossible to get somebody that is bigoted and hates people just for existing that is with no later community. Anybody mm-hmm. who collects, I always say this thing, if you think that, um, or... Gay people can be criminalized for minding their business. They're coming for you too. They're coming for everybody, as far as I'm concerned. Because if you want a wicked person, you'll get a wicked person. A person that is capable of thinking and being like, okay, this should not be. That is somebody that, is, that cares about others. But if you want somebody and if you want laws and constitutions that criminalize a particular group of people, you're sacrificing your freedom inherently. Because as long as you continue to believe that these people should have the power to tell some people to shut up. Mm. They are coming to tell you to shut up too. That's so it's for it. everybody. All of us go call it. <laughs> All of us go call it. <laughs> you know what? We have to wrap up this episode because I feel like we've spoken a lot about, you know, this topic. I will just say to people that are gay, like I said before, please make sure that the conditions surrounding your circumstance are right before you come out, especially in this part of the world. Or better still, move to a place that is, you know, accommodates your sexuality better if you can afford to. But if you can't afford to, I don't know what advice to give you, but I wish you all the best in your lives. And for people that are so, you know, anti-gay, uh, I would just say I kind of understand where they're coming from because I feel like a lot of it is learned because of where we are and, you know, the tradition surrounding like where we live. But I'll just say, let people live, let people be right so far it is not like affecting you or it's not affecting like they're not coming to your space to like you know put anything on you or impose anything on you or for me i feel like the only people that really should be criminalized are people that you know take advantage of people that are not yet at the age to consent 
those are the people that I feel like they should be criminalized. Anything, any grown adult Mm -hmm. decides to do with their life, it doesn't matter if you agree with it or not. It's not your business, Mm -hmm. in my opinion. So at the end of the day, let's really just leave and let others leave. I wish you guys all the best. Please continue to like, comment, and share my content. And yeah, more episodes to come. Thank you so much and have a good day. Bye.